Hi everybody and welcome back. So the last uh, video I did in the last video I, sh I got this ready to go. This video I'm going to prepare it for quilting. I'm going to quilt it and I'm going to finish it. It's not, I'm not actually doing a lot but this is a stage that a lot of people find intimidating so I thought let's go for it. So this is a method that I use. Um, there's different there's different quilt as you go methods. This is the one that I use. I found it a while ago online. I liked it because it lets me be lazy, so I keep doing it. So we're gonna take the quilt top that we made the other day. Well, like 20 minutes ago for me. It's like two days ago for you guys. I'm gonna so this is the quilt top. This is a single layer of um, batting. You can use anything that makes sense to you and. If you are just learning, just, just working with scrap, working with whatever, you don't want to take a lot of risk, put a lot of money in it, you can use an old t-shirt, you can use an old towel, you can use anything that makes sense to you to put between your two layers of fabric. This is the we're going to have the top, we're going to have the batting, and then there's going to be, in a couple of minutes, there's going to be another layer of fabric underneath. The only rule about batting is let's say that you're going to use, let's say that you're doing a project and you know, in one of my upcoming videos there, I'm pretty sure as long as I keep doing this that there's gonna be a few projects that are gonna require taking multiple pieces and putting them all together. If you're doing a project where you have more than one piece of batting, the batting needs to be the same. Um, you can't use an old sheet, you can use an old sheet, you can use whatever the heck you want, you just need a, you need, a, you need a layer in between the inner and the outer, and ideally you want it to be something soft. Um, diaper flannel, the flannelette that people use for diapers, that stuff's really good. It's inexpensive. You can get it on almost any fabric store. You can use, obviously, you can use these cotton battings. You can use the inexpensive polyester batting. So you can use whatever makes sense. If money is an object for you, you can use an old t-shirt, a couple of layers of t-shirt material. Just remember that assuming that you eventually want to move on to projects where you're going to take one of these and connect it to another one of these. Remember that whatever you're using has to be the same throughout. The, you have to use the same material throughout your project or it will feel look and feel weird. Okay. Not that it matters. That's just for future reference. Okay. So this is pretty simple. I've got the schmancy, schmancy, schmancy ruler. I'm just going to, this is called squaring it off. Now for this method, the batting goes in right away and the trimming happens right away. In a lot of quilts, you put your stuff together and then trim it. We're gonna trim first. This is what's different about the way I put this stuff together. So what I wanna do is I wanna come along here, line my ruler up. I like, to take, I like to take a stitched line and line up one of the lines of my ruler here. Now don't forget, if you don't have the fancy rulers and stuff, you don't really need them, just take your time trust yourself and and go what you can do you know what I'm going to show you this I'm going to show you this just so you know just so you know you can take a you can take a regular old pen a regular old ruler and you can just mark your fabric any way you want with any type of ruler that you want and then just make sure that when you're cutting your fabric, you cut just inside your pen lines so that you're not making your work messy with pens. Some people really like pencils. Pencils are really good. They do, pencil marks will wash out and they're not as dark. So if you don't have the fancy rulers, go ahead and find something to mark your fabric with and then just cut it with a decent pair of scissors. Um, that's all you really have to think about. So I am going to Mark this, and we already said, we already said that when this is finished, it's two inches because of the seam allowances and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna go two inches. I'm gonna turn my ruler around so I can do this properly. Okay, so I'm going to go two inches and I'm gonna trim it. This is, it. I mean, I'm, I'm spending more time explaining it than I would have if I just done it. So let's just get to it, we're gonna go around now. You will want to pin this, um, especially if you're new. One thing to keep in mind though is if you just don't press and if you, pr if you, if you apply pressure, you'll stretch everything out of shape. 
batting is actually kind of sticky and hold things in place. So if you have a light touch and you go slow, take your time and don't worry too much, you can wait on the, um, you can wait on the uh, pinning for a minute. And there's a good reason why, just bear with me. Take your time. This just takes off those, it'll take off little time, you'll take off a little bit of your fabric, that's normal to be expected. Uh, let's just keep going. Two more. Like I said, take your time. Don't don't manhandle it. Um, don't get don't agonize about it. And if something isn't quite perfect, don't worry about it. Because by, when this prop when this is done, you might notice every single. You're probably going to notice every single mistake you make as you make it. Um, but I will tell you right now. Take your time. Trust yourself because nobody else is going to see anything but a beautiful finished product. So we're going around. I'm just uh, doing this. I have a cutting mat. This is just a right. This is just an inexpensive cutting mat that uh, I have. So I'm just making sure that things line up on the cutting mat the way that I want and. And yeah, like I mean, I've got a little spot here where the fabric is a little bit misaligned, but rather than fighting with it, I'm going to leave it. I don't think anybody's going to notice it. I don't think anybody's going to care. I think that if anybody's concerned, I think if anybody is concerned about this being off by an eighth of an inch, then I don't give a shit what their opinion is anyway. <laughs> okay, I should be nicer than that, but I probably won't be. Okay, I set that down just off camera carefully for a minute. Now... This finished out at 23 by 23 inches. So I cut my backing, this is the back, at 28 by 28 inches. This is a 28 inch piece of fabric because we want this in the middle. We want this in the middle. We want this to go here. It's a little bigger than it needs to be, but I also had the extra, I have some extra, I have extra of this fabric. So there's no point in being, there's no, okay, if you don't have a lot of fabric, you're gonna want tighter, you, you're gonna want 26. Um, I have extra of this fabric so I can be a little bit more generous. You'll see at the end, you're gonna have to bear with me and just uh, um, trust me here. So you want to line this up so that this is in the middle-ish. You wanna line this up so that when you measure from here to here, Nothing is bigger than two inches. Or I mean, so that everything is at least two inches. This is barely two inches because we do have salvage. I'm off camera on this side. This is, um, this is over three inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over a little bit, pick up the batting and the fabric together, just lightly. Remember that thing you did when you were a kid and you fluffed your sheets? Well, you're fluffing this into place. Just do the same thing. Take your time. Don't agonize. Don't worry about it. If it takes you, if you have, don't worry, if it takes you 15 tries, take 15 tries. I've done it. Make sure that the back, right now, right now you're more concerned that the back is flat. You're more concerned that the back is flat than anything else right now, and you're more concerned that this has got lots of space. This will you, we will be trimming this later, but if anything shifts while you're because we are going to go quilt this, we're going to do free motion quilting on this. If anything shifts while we're quilting this, we want this to still have enough here to do our to, to finish the quilt. You'll see. Anybody who's ever done Quilt As You Don't Go may already know exactly what I'm up to. Anybody who's not sure, so now we stop. Now we pause, we take a breath, and we go, oh, that's beautiful. I did beautiful shit. This is awesome. This is absolutely fucking amazing. Okay. Now that we have made our ego happy, we're going to come back over here, and we have two options. We have several options. Now, I happen to, I'm going to be using these. I happen to have um, quilting pins. They're pretty simple. They're, they're just a safety pin. I don't know if, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show these very well. They're just a safety pin that's been slightly bent so that it can go through the fabric really well. I mean, they're really helpful. And I like these. If, if you don't know about these for sewing, I like these because I can pin everything up and I'm not stabbing myself as I sew because the other option 
is to start pinning it all together. So you stick your pin in, you bring your pin up. Then as you're sewing, you hope you don't stab yourself in the stomach. <laughs> so you can obviously use pins. I will, I, you know what? I love to talk. I love to hear my own voice. I will talk about pins in a minute while we're quilting, but I will say that your best friend is to just learn to develop a really light touch. Don't you, you don't need to, you don't need to grab, you don't need to use, use full hand strength when you're grabbing stuff because you can just, you can run your hand over a handful of pins and just, it'll, it'll annoy you, but it won't hurt you. You can have something that's been pinned up in your lap and not a problem. But what we're going to do here, and I'm going to be generous with myself. I'm going to start in the corners. I'm going to start in the corner that's off camera that you can't see. And I'm just going to pin this stuff down. I'm going to take my time. I just lean forward a bit. What you're actually worried about at this stage is that the back doesn't shift because you can't see it as you sew. Um, even experienced quilters, sorry to those of you, if, any, if anybody happens to be an experienced quilter and happens to be willing to watch this dribble, sorry, but we've all done it. Um, no matter what your level of experience, you're, you're quilting along on something and the underneath fabric shifts and you're sewing away and then you go, oh, there's a, I just sewed a massive giant crease into this fabric because if it folds, you're screwed. Anyway, I'm probably going to turn the camera off for a bit so that you guys don't have to watch me yelling at pins. And you just take your time. If, if you are not a confident sewer, pin the crap out of this. Don't be afraid. You're not gonna wreck anything with more pins. You're not gonna wreck anything with less pins. Um, whatever makes sense to you. There's a couple of techniques that are super easy that require a, little, a lot less work, um, which I will talk about as I go. I'm gonna be doing free motion quilting, which means I'm gonna be doing the I'm still learning it. I'm really enjoying it. And I'm, I've got a basic technique down now. And so I'm just trying to build on that. You can just go straight up and down. You can just follow these lines, go up and down and up and down and back and forth. But you do have to sew these together. Some people also like to put in a basting stitch. Some people like to take their quilting and they like to baste all the way around along the very edge to hold everything down as they go. You can consider that. That's something that you can do. You can do this any way you want. You don't have to do free motion quilting. Most machines, if you happen to have a machine that you've bought in the last, I would say four or five years, then it probably does come with what's called a darning foot. The darning foot is what you use for free motion quilting. You also use it for darning your socks. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this done because I already said I was going to do that and not subject you to this. I'm going to go ahead and get this done and then I will meet you over at the machine. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm about to start with the free motion quilting. I've got everything ready to go here. Just a couple of things. Um, if you suffer from dry hands, because I do, these are, these need to be washed. Last, the last quilt I did was black, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, if you have issues with dry hands, a pair of quilting gloves can save your life because I will, okay, well they can, um, because they can um, be coat. I can't talk today, but that's fine. I don't care. Um, when you're quilting, you have to be able to grab the fabric and it has to be able to move onto your fingers. If you are, let's just get this up here where you guys can see it better. If, you're, if you are doing this and your fingers are sliding on the fabric as much as the fabric is sliding, then you're gonna have to dig. You're gonna have to really press down and even a small project is gonna make your hands so sore and so tired. Um, moisturizer helps, but if you are somebody like me who happens to have really dry hands, then these are quilting gloves. I, I, I did, I mean, like I said, I, I sew for a living. So I'm sewing for four or five hours a day, most days as a minimum. So well, I can't say as a minimum, now that I have Rose helping, I, I actually get days to myself now, but this, there's no slippage. My hand's not slipping. You do not have to run out and get, um, quilting gloves can be ex surprisingly expensive, but you can get inexpensive gardening gloves. Anything with a rubber, anything with a fingers are rubberized um, is going to help. Uh, those dish gloves that you use. Um, 
I had one friend recommend an inexpensive cotton glove, glove over your hands and then dish gloves because it keeps your hands from getting all whatever. So if you have issues with dry skin, even a small um, project can really like make you feel like you're just having to just dig. So that is one thing to keep in mind. That is one thing to consider, especially if you are really like if, if you're if you're watching this because you're just looking for tips and ideas to build up to making that big giant blanket you've always wanted, this is something you should consider. For starting a quilt, for starting this, it's actually really easy. So what you do is you just you make sure your backing fabric, that's the stuff here. Make sure that's just sort of you you don't want this to fold over. So you want to be careful. No big deal there. So you you um ah let's get this back over here. I gotta do something else too. I don't know if you're going to see this, and I don't want to mess with the camera. Um, machines have feed dogs. They have little teeth in the bottom plate that help move your fabric along. So before you can quilt, you have to either cover them or lower them. This machine lets me lower them and get them completely out of the way. Even inexpensive machines, even like I've, I have got a little machine that I got for like around, I forget what that machine was, $129 that... The feed dogs, these are called feed dogs. They don't, the feed dogs don't come down, but they came with a small plate that you can just put over the feed dogs to work with. It's, it's, it's a, you have to really keep an eye on it if you're, if you're doing that. If you're using, a, if you're using one of those kinds of machines, you got to really pay attention when you're, while you're working. But you just have to make sure that the feed dogs are down unless, so let's just get into the unlesses. You can just, I'll just stare at you from here. Um, I'm doing free motion quilting the other types of quilting that you can do with this, and it's perfectly valid, you can just simply sew straight or diagonal lines throughout the work. You don't have to do this fancy crap, and it's still quilting. My first projects, I would just start at, I would start like, you start a little ways in, I would make a straight line and a diagonal, then I would fill this stuff in, then I would keep going across the, ooh, it just, it just went out of focus. Because I'm getting boring already, honey. I'm getting boring. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> See, I'm boring. The camera went out of focus. I said, I'm getting boring. And then you're like, yeah, I'm not listening to you either. <laughs> I will stop harassing. To zoom in. No, it's fine. I just had my arm waving around because I was being bad with the camera. It's just me being bad. It's fine. You go back to ignoring me again. It's fine. <laughs> she is ready to kill me. It's hilarious. Okay. I love you. If you do not have the schmancy and you want to just do straight lines, do them, do them. The, um, one of the things that I will say, there's, a, there's something called stitch in the ditch where you stitch right along where, you're, where, you're so, where your sew lines are and that will give you a bit of reinforcement as you go. If you are going, you don't have to do it, there's no rules, well there are some rules, but anyway, I'm just trying to avoid, uh, I'm just trying to avoid getting started because it takes time. Okay, I'm just being lazy. Uh, so if you are free motion quilting, I'm just going to leave this on while I quilt. I may speed it up. I have no idea. Or I may just keep talking. Who the hell knows? I'm not going to try and go too crazy because this is a small piece. But again, if you are not willing, not interested, or not able to do free motion quilting, just do straight lines. But I will say to those of you that are hand sewing, this is your time to shine because when you're doing it by hand, you really have the time to take the time to place each stitch exactly where you want it. And people who quilt by hand with a with a, just a sewing needle, they you can get some really amazing results the very first time because you can just use little chalks and make little outlines or you know, you don't like a stitch, you take it out. I I don't know how to describe it. I'm overthinking. Okay, to get started. To get started is pretty simple. Take your thread Run your machine down and back up once. Try not to let your stuff move and get that bottom thread to the top. Nothing, nothing horrible is going to happen at this point. Um, this just means that when you're done, you're not going to have extra thread sticking out the bottom that you got to go find and trim. It's just a cleaner look on the back. And then you can either just do two or three stitches straight up and down. Don't forget your feed dogs, your feed dogs are now down. Nothing's gonna put nothing's gonna pull or push your fabric until you pull or push your fabric. So you just do two or three stitches. You don't uh, you make sure your stuff is where it's supposed to be. There, lock the stitch. Personally, 
Um, you can at this point, if you want, reach in and cut that. I like to just start, get a few stitches, and then just get at it that way. Now, I'm a beginner. I am still learning. I'm, I'm a beginner. I'm still learning. There's a really easy technique that anybody can do. Like, there, there's, there's people that do all sorts of, like, they'll do a feather or a vine or a whatever and all, all sorts of cool. I'm not there yet. I'm not even pretending that I'm there yet. I'm just having fun. So this is kind of like, I will do, I'm going to do loops. I'm going to do a loop and then do a loop and then do a loop. And I'm not going to try too hard. And it's still going to look great. It's still going to look awesome. Um, you have to decide up front how big or how small your loops are going to be. It's not the end of the world if you combine big and small as your quilt. So I'm just going to go and whoop, I'm going to slow I'm going to slow the machine down. So the thing to keep in mind is that as you're going, you just want to go around. I'm going to go back on itself right here. I'm going to go around here. Now I'm still enough of a beginner that I don't want to screw around. So I'm going to go straight into this corner. Whether or not this is a beginner move or not, nobody's going to notice or care. Um, I'm just going to go straight into this corner so that I can just get that area tacked down. Now, the biggest mistake that you, the biggest mistake, the biggest problem that you're going to have when you're free motion quilting is sometimes you're going to, sometimes if, sometimes, sometimes just you shift, you sneeze, something distracts you and you, you do your stitch, you go down, you go up, something happens and you go boop and you move way too far in a single stitch. If that happens, just bring it back, just bring it back, try and stay close to where you already were and just continue and you're good to go. You're ideally looking for stitches that aren't too far apart, aren't too close together. That's in the eye of the beholder. Um, don't forget when you're done, this is all going to be sewn up. The, the main perp, there's only two, there's only two reasons why you're doing this. One for decoration and two to make sure that the batting, as you wash dry, use it, do whatever you're going to do with it, doesn't start slumping. Um, like, you know, you wash an old pillow or something and it goes, and the, and then the material starts slumping to one end or the other. Batting can do that over time. So you're just tacking down your batting so it's not going to go anywhere. That's all you're really trying to do. I like to, I like to when I can, I've got, I've got one fabric here, one fabric here, one fabric here. So I like to get near to those little corners sometimes. I don't need to get every single one of them to perfection, but I like to get close. Okay, I have a little, I have a little extra thread here that's not supposed to be here. Just a little tail that I didn't trim. Okay, and here we go. I'm just going to do this. Again, if you are using regular pins, this is where a light touch is going to come in handy. Where, like, you know, my hand's right on top of a pin right now, a, a, a safety pin. If I were using regular pins, I would either consider taking it out right now or I might just um, leave it. I don't know what I would do. The gloves are really helpful. When you're sewing, try not to go, try not to go completely off the edge here. So this is this is the this is the quilt top. This is the quilt bottom. And by the way, on this sandwich, I totally forgot. On the sandwich, this is facing to the outside. That is facing to the outside um, because this is the finished thing. And then you're going to be finishing it. So this is this is called a sandwich. You've got your your backing fabric that is done with the pretty side down. The wrong side is facing to the center. You got your batting, and then you've got your your top fabric where the pretty side is facing up and the back side is facing to the center. So make sure you line them up like that. As you're sewing, start at one end and move towards the other. If you do your outsides first and finish in the center, okay, let me back up and start this again. If you have, let's say I have something that's a little too much fabric. Maybe I've, maybe I, maybe something, maybe this is a little loose. And when I finish it, it's going to push that way a bit. 
if I go all the way around the edges and then work my way to the center, any fabric that still needs to smooth itself out is going to form into a clump in the center. It's going to be one big, it's going to be um, just creases and pleats everywhere. And it's going to, it's not going to look good. So what I'm doing, I don't know if you've noticed, I started here, I'm moving along the top. I'm coming in through here, back to that, back to making sure I don't screw up my edges. Go towards this point here in the corner. Give a little loop. Now, generally speaking, if you're working with a larger product, you, project, you don't get to turn your material. It's just a pain in the butt. With this, obviously you do. So I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna turn it and flip it. If I'm gonna, if you're gonna turn your fabric around, it's like, okay, I wanna turn this fabric. Make sure your needle is at a full stop before you shift anything. Because if you don't, if you try, if you try to do a sudden shift like this, you could find yourself going stitch, 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 way off in the, in the hinterland somewhere. Don't do that. Okay. Let it stop. I'm debating on where I want to go next because I want to get, there's a blank spot in here that I want to get a little bit of stitching into. Okay, almost to the edge. I'm just going to keep talking. I'll tell you right now, if I keep doing more of these, I think I'm having fun, so I think I might do more of these. Maybe I'll have a topic. Maybe I'll come up with a topic. I'm gonna do quilting and shit talk about something or someone. Nah, I don't talk shit about people. Just the wife. She's used to it. So I love you. <laughs> She's hardwired for this. <laughs> it's like she just, she can psychically sense if I am even thinking of saying something stupid. <laughs> Okay, and I forgot to do this section here. Nice thing about this is that you can just stop, start, come back to where you came from. Okay, and okay, so when you're actually learning to properly quilt, this is why I'm doing this is why I'm doing these loopy loops right now. When you when you're actually learning to properly quilt, you're gonna have to learn to quilt forward, back. I can go, I don't know if you're noticing I'm going forward, backward, side to side and you'll learn how to start doing designs and patterns. I'm not there yet. I'm not doing the designs and the patterns yet. I'm not, I'm not, I like what I'm doing. I like the results I'm getting. So I am going to take my time. I'm closing in on a pin and I need to take it out. I am just taking my time learning how to do all the things. You can kind of tell because I'm, I mean, I usually talk way faster than this and I'm like, I need to slow down so I can think. You do not, I am, I like to, I like to, um, I like to, like whenever there's a seam or stuff like that, I like to make sure that there's stitches near it. You do not have to like cover every single ounce of every single seam. I, I'm just, I'm just new. I know I'm new. I don't care. Around in a big circle. So the one thing that you want to focus on, the biggest thing that you want to focus on, if you get one or two stitches in the exact same spot because you're turning or whatever, nobody's going to care. Thing that you want to focus on is smooth lines. Don't worry about whether they're good lines. Worry about whether they're smooth, because you can really have a lot of stops and starts, jumpy. Um, one thing that you can do intentionally to get the hang of it is to intentionally go into the sharp, sharper angles while you're getting the hang of it. Um, don't do your very first project. You know. Oh, I'm going to make everything look like a daisy and a rose, and I'm going to put stars and hearts and. Um, if you are a natural, some people are, my God, Rose was, I showed, I said, hey, Rose, try this. And she's like, okay. There was jealousy ensued. A few people know the story. Don't worry, not the, not the harmful kind. Rose still thinks we're more or less okay. <laughs> um, but when I first started, when I first started doing this, the first few times, the first few projects I ever did where I tried to do free motion quilting, I was doing zigzags. Um, 
lines so that when I would zig instead of zagging, it would, it would fit, it would blend. Um, expect to make, you know, expect to make a mistake, and then you can plan for the mistake, and then it's not a mistake anymore now, is it? So that's, that's my only advice, and, uh, and again, you don't have to make, you don't have to make every line perfect. Um, if something comes up and some of your stitches are closer together than other stitches, don't worry about it. The only time you're really worrying is if you have those big gaps. Like, I mean, if you, if you, you want your stitches, I'm sure that there's a standard. I, I really am. I'm sure that there's a standard of, oh, you should tr be trying for this. I, I am just trying for a completed project that other people think looks nice. That is your first and only goal. Unless your goal, well, if your goal is to own a, if you, to own, if your goal is to enter a quilting contest, you may want to be, uh, well, you may want to watch videos by people far more experienced than me, but anyway, <laughs> we won't get into that. We just want to have a finished product. We just want to have something that's cool and awesome, and we don't want to have to agonize about that. Um, I forgot to mention that when I started my, when I started, I don't know if you guys noticed that I started in the pink over here so that any, um, extra stitching, if there's a little, like, you know, you trim your, you trim your thread, there's going to be a little teeny tiny tail, even when you trim it close. Um, if you, if you, um, if you start, if it's, if you're stitching freehand and you're able, if you're able, depending on how your pattern lays, if you're able to start it in a position where an extra stitch or two and a little teeny tiny bit of, of tail isn't going to be noticed as much, that's the place to do it. This one isn't going to take too long because I'm intentionally um, making my loops bigger. Batting comes rated. Batting has ratings, and certain battings are rated so that you have to make sure that you stitch at least four inches apart, or no, no further than four inches apart. Um, this particular batting is rated so that as long as your stitches are within 10 inches of each other. It's kind of hard to describe. If you go to a fabric store, you'll, they'll, they'll explain it to you way better than I can. But um, I'm going to turn my I'm going to turn my fabric so I can see things better again. Um, but yeah, like. So if you go by if you go by batting, which is the stuff on the back, if you go if you go by your batting, if it says four inches, then that means there has to be at least, you know, four. In, a lot, they have to be a stitch line here and a stitch line here, and there can be no more than four inches separating those two lines. This is ten inches. I can I can go here and here and be fine. So if you're just starting out, if you're starting out and you have an opportunity to um, pick your batting based on that rating, get the one with the highest number. For, for um, and just ask them to say how close do the stitches have to be with this batting and they will tell you and if they say 10 inches that's good news um, there's four we, we saw we've seen four eight ten there's got to be more different areas different different um, um, everything different everything let's just say different everything because I don't know what to say now um, but yeah, you can make you can make this particular design with or without the um, strips with the different with or without the strips having um, with or without the strips having um, the the every other color. You can just go center round once, around once, and around once. I'm saying it funny. I'm assuming that you guys have watched the previous video, so if you haven't, then just ignore me because I'm not making any sense. And you can do small loops, big loops. So this, these personal projects are a great opportunity. When I'm doing a project to sell, I stick with what I know. I stick with what makes sense, what looks good. I want people to give me money. Um, you know, that's what that's what you know that's what putting stuff in Etsy shops is all about. So I will stick with what I know works. Um, and then I do these projects for friends, for fun, for giveaways. I did a giveaway just this afternoon. Um, I do those projects 
and that's my opportunity to try new techniques, new ideas. So in this corner, I'm already at the very end, but I already know that I've got this section here to do, so I'm going to work my way back up. I don't want to finish this because I don't want, if there's any material that's a little, um, it's, I don't know how to describe it unless it actually happens. If it happens, I'll show you. <laughs> but you don't, you never, you do want to finish at an edge. If anybody here is a quilter, please, my God, help me out. Do me a favor and explain some of this shit. I do not know the terminology. I'm, I'm, I'm learning as I go. Like I said, I stick with the stuff that I, I stick with, I, I take something that I've learned, I work with it, I get confident, confident and comfortable with it, <laughs> sell it in the shop a little, then I learn the next new thing. Then I learn the next new thing. Um, I'm trying to keep my, I'm trying to keep my, whoop, okay. We have a drama. We have the pin got stuck in the corner there. Pin hit the pin hit the hit the uh, foot. Nothing. It's not the end of the world, but it's going to be a pain in the ass to get this pin out. That's all. Try and keep an eye on that. Um, it's not the end of the world when something like that happens, but it's a pain in the ass to deal with. If I'd have absolutely, if I'd have absolutely had to, I would have just done a loop down here to bring this away from that pin, then then went and got it. But. I didn't want to. I'm feeling special and I needed that pin to just bend to my will. Hi Bruno. Bruno is climbing my leg now. So one thing that can sometimes happen with a um, with a slower machine, with some machines, it just depends on the machine, is that slippage where you're just like minding your own business and suddenly the material just seems to go whoop. Um, that can happen. Don't let it bother you when it does. Like I mean if I miss a whole section up here, let's say, okay, let's say I've missed a whole section up here. I can just continue, because I'm gonna do this. At the, at the end, when I'm done, I'm gonna take a look and make sure I didn't miss a section. You can start and stop your thread whenever you want. Obviously, I put a fresh bobbin on before starting and I'm doing a small project. I know that I'm gonna get done without having to change anything. But you just start, I, okay, let's say I miss a section here. I would just start in the pink. And don't forget, there's a little pink heart. You don't need a big section to start in. Um, and I would just do a, do a couple of quick things in that section. I, you know, don't ever agonize about, oh, I put a stitch in the wrong spot and I've ruined it. Um, you know, that's what stitch rippers are for. Yeah, see, we did it here. We did it here. I don't know if I can, I'm going to have to bring the camera up a little bit. I'm going to bring the camera up really close, guys, so bear with me. See this section right there. See that little, see that little, little crease starting? That is because there was a little tiny bit of fabric that needs to go this way. And when I come back to finish it, I will be able to push that forward and get it out of the way. Do you, I hope you guys are seeing this. This is what I've been trying to explain. This is what I've been trying to explain as I go. This is why you stop here. Because if I'm trying to sew, okay, I'm just, I just gave it a quick little mini crease. If I'm trying to sew that, if I'm trying to sew that in the middle, my only choice is to fold it over and have a crease. I don't want to do that. So this way, I'm going to be able to flatten it out. Once I get, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to, I'm going to hold the camera at a weird angle and make things awkward for all of us. Then I'm going to put the camera back. Okay, check. I've caught up to myself now. So I'm going to finish, I'm going to finish this line. I'm going to finish this section here. And then when I come back for my last pass, anything that needs to be pushed forward a bit will push forward. Now, what can happen? What can end up happening is when I'm done, when I'm done, this could be end up being this could end up being 23 inches wide. And I don't know if you guys noticed, I didn't measure to 23 inches when I was cutting this because it's a personal project. Um, but when I'm done, this may end up being a quarter inch longer than it is wide because of this. We don't know. We don't know. Um, <laughs> A professional quilter with the kind of experience that I hope to have one day, I would assume isn't going to have that problem. I'm not there yet. I don't fucking care. I'm. This is going to look. This is going to look awesome. You guys are going to. Well, maybe you. Maybe you guys are allergic to pink like I am. 
Um, so, but it's gonna look awesome. Lisa's gonna love it. Lisa's gonna, Lisa's gonna love it. And if she's not hearing me now, she's not gonna care or notice that it might be a quarter inch longer in one direction than the other. Um, and by the way, anybody who's doing this, who, anybody who is hand sewing, a great way to uh, get some experience with this sort of stuff is to take these measurements and pare them down. Do a four inch do a four inch panel in the center, and then one or two layers of two inch. If you do two inch, you'll end up with a one and a half inch. Do a little mug rug. Do a little um, uh, tarot. Tarot, do a little thing to put a daily tarot card on. Um, if you use the right, if you use an all cotton batting, 100% cotton batting, you can make a pot holder. There's plenty of projects that you can use where you get the opportunity to, um, yeah. See, now we're now we're moving into our last section. I just did the thing that I that I've been wondering about. I got a stitch that's a little too wide and I'm not comfortable with leaving it. So I'm gonna do the cheater's method. I'm gonna come around. I can see the stitch that's concerning me. I'm gonna go slow so I can line myself up and I just stitched right over it and stitched it down. You make up your own rules because this is your project. Okay, I'm still talking. I thought I was gonna get tired of hearing my own voice. Apparently my ego has plenty of room for my own voice. Okay. One lovely loop. We're going to bring it all the way down. We're going to bring it all the way back up. We're going to get there to that pin. Got it this time. Got it on time. Okay. So we are doing the very last piece. We are getting all of that little bits of the top layer moving around. I'm going to stop because I just saw through thread. I'm almost done, guys. Well, okay, I'm not almost done. Our next step is our next step is back over at the cutting table. So we are. Let's get this done. Okay, I'm gonna take this pin out. Now remember, this is the little corner is where we had that little itty bitty slump. Of now that wasn't this. This was this was not the um, batting that moved. It was the top piece that moved. So I am gonna go. I'm going to smooth it ever so slightly because I already know it's there. I spotted it the first time through. You're not necessarily going to spot these right away on a bigger. You're not going to. You're not necessarily going to. You're not. Oh my God! I can't even say it. You're not really going to spot these on a bigger project until you get to the ends, which is why you start at one end and go down to the other. So I'm just going to pull it. I'm not pulling. I'm just going to hold it nice and smooth. Get to the center. Hold my fabric and slowly do a little loopy loop. Now I already know I want the loose thread. I want anything that might look like a loose thread to end in the pink. So My camera stopped on me. I don't know where I was. It said just stopped automatically because it's been 30 minutes. And I never, I kept looking over, I kept checking. I don't think it happened too long. Okay, I just finished. I got, I had, a, I, I pointed out that slump. I don't know, I'm gonna repeat myself in case the camera cut me off before I could say it. So what I did was when I got to about here, Oh, can't see it here. When I got to about, when, when, when I was, I got to about here on my last little pass going into this corner. So I just smoothed out that little area that had the little, that had that little slumpy spot in it. And I, I said, it, and I, it was the fabric that shifted, not the, bat, the batting really doesn't go anywhere. And then I just kind of, I just kind of went, okay. And then I went, I put a stitch straight to the corner to hold everything down. Then I just took a little loopy loop and I ended it in the pink. And I'm done. This part's done. We're gonna go back over to the cutting table in a second. Um, I'm just gonna flip it over. I'm gonna trim that. And it's done. It's done. We're happy. Now, the binding. The binding is the next step. And we'll see how that goes. Well, we're not gonna see how that goes. I'm gonna show you how that goes. So we're gonna go over to the table right now. Okay, we are at the table. Table, table is my friend. Okay, so this is what we got so far. I'm gonna turn it upside right. I don't know if, I don't know how well, I actually don't really know for sure how well you guys are seeing this. I've got such a tiny screen here, it's just all guesswork. My wife is the one who does the, the YouTubeage, so this is where we are. Okay, now 
I will try my best to explain as I go. I'm gonna, you can do this one of two ways. You can mark it, you can get a ruler, mark it and cut it with scissors. Obviously I've got the toys, so I'm gonna mark this. I'm gonna go one inch all the way along. I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna show you a couple of things as I go because you're gonna see this. Now this is a quilt as you go method. Um, this, this, is, this is the one I use. I thought, you ever, you ever look something up? I actually found this on YouTube. And then I went to look up the person's channel that I learned it from and realized that, that I thought I learned it from and realized that that's not what was good, that, that I didn't, I have no idea. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a little tiny bit of batting showing through. We're not concerned with that. If the batting rolls up a tiny bit in the corner, trust me, no one's gonna know, no one's gonna care. If for some reason, if for some reason something has happened and this is really, really wide, then you can come in with a pair of scissors and trim it, trim it back and get it a little closer to your thing. But for the most part, I wouldn't worry about it. I call this rustic um, because it, you will, by the nature of this type of binding, because of the way that you're dealing with your fabrics and stuff, um, it's going to have a, it's, it's not, it's not necessarily going to be as clean as a proper binding is, but I like this a lot better. I think it's, I think it's, I think, I don't know. I just like it better. Um, I've done bindings. Um, I just, if this, if this breaks loose, if this breaks loose or stitches come out or anything like this, it's going to be a four second job to fix it. Whereas if binding starts to come off, you could find yourself having to take the binding off the entire thing and redoing it. And I don't know why, it just, so you're gonna go all the way up, you're gonna go all the way down the end, you're gonna go all the way from the corner, not, not the corner of your fabric, you're gonna go all the way to the corner, one inch, all the way. So you're gonna get up to this end, one inch, and all the way off the end. Save the scrap if you have if you have if you have wide enough pieces of scrap. Save them for your next project. Um, that's what I do. And again, this is a really good project if you've got scrap. If you have access to, if you have scrap fabric, um, obviously. If you have access to inexpensive fabrics, this I mean, almost any almost every thrift store. There's tricks. There's tricks to tell whether or not it's new or not, but almost every thrift store these days has a fabric section. And as long as you know how to spot whether or not the fabric is new, um, you're pretty good to go. I don't get, I mean, I mean, when I first started out, that's where I was getting most of my fabrics, especially for the personal projects. Um, some of the fabrics that I got were so nice that I even used them in the shop. Um, I don't anymore. I don't anymore because I'm just, it, I would, I would be, it would take me, you know, I would have, I would have to turn shopping into a full-time job just to, um, I just threw my cutting thing on the floor. It's over there. Okay. We're done there. Uh, Bruno, you can't have that. Stay away. Okay. Where are we at? We are at the, let's turn this into the binding now. Anybody who has any experience with quilting probably already knows exactly what I'm doing next. So you can do this a few different ways, depending on your confidence level. Obviously you can pin it as you go. I mean, I'm just putting things away as I chit chat about what I'm going to do next. Okay. Now I like to, I like to figure out which my top and my bottom is. And depending on, depending on how I feel about the particular project, I can sometimes do sides first and then top and bottom. For this project, I'm just gonna go all the way around and I'm gonna start on this side. So if you are not confident, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it, you're gonna fold it all the way up to here. I'm letting this off camera again, guys. Maybe it's back to the camera. If you are not a confident person, if you are not confident about this, then what you're going to do is you're going to fold this all the way forward and iron it and get it, get that first, get the first crease in there. It'll make it a lot easier to work with. What I'm going to do, because 
I'm confident. I'm going to, I'm going to clip it. I'm going to pin it here. I'm going to put some clips in. Okay. And then I'm going to keep going. And a good trick to do, this is going to seem, I don't know if I'm going to, I don't, I'm hoping I'm, 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 I, this is only the second time I've um, done this on camera. So if I'm doing it badly, let me know. And then I'll make sure I'm more obvious instead of, instead of doing it from here, if you do it from here, you're working with angles because it'll always automatically angle. Come all the way back here. Come all the way back here and fold it forward. Okay. Pin it. Get your end into place. Pin it or clip it. Okay. This big section here, go to the center, roll it forward, roll it forward, roll it forward. Once you, um, the fabric will tend to want to go where you want it to go. Bit of hand-eye coordination. Take your time. Clip it. Clip it. First side done. Now, again, if you're not confident, iron it down. It will, it'll, it'll hold everything in place so that if anything shifts, it's just a simple boop, get it back into place. Um, I'm not going to iron it. This is just for my wife. Don't tell her I said that. So you can just check. Give it a little tug. Give it a little tug. It'll, it'll, most of it, most of it will fall into place. Go on this side. And again, we're going left, right. Um, I like to put the first one in the center. Sometimes I think, sometimes I pay attention to this. Sometimes I don't. The next one, all the way, the next one up at the end. And just kind of do the center like that. Put in your extra clips where you want them. And you'll find that if you'll find that most people think it's it's really it's really like it's really uh, common. You're not you're not doing anything that nobody else is doing. But I found that if you do the ends first, that the center just kind of wants to. Get your fingers in there, push. The center just kind of wants to fall into place anyway. But that's just how I do it. Honestly, you just gotta do whatever makes sense to you. I'm going a little crazy with the clips just to show, just to show the clips in action. Um, and then I'm be I'm gonna stop the I'm gonna I'm gonna be right back. I am going to go sew these two down. I'm going to turn the camera off to save my battery and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so this is done. My dog is done. My dog is done with me right now. My wife just pointed out that I keep going, oh, yeah, I keep doing self-deprecating stuff. So just to keep in mind, I'm in Canada and Canadians can say I'm sorry when and and kind of like in the southern states where they go, bless your heart, and in Canada you go, Oh, I'm sorry. So yeah, don't take, I'm not, anytime that, anytime that I sound a little too self-deprecating, I'm not beating myself up. Trust me on that. Okay. So again, this one I did left and right. I also, I went, when you, okay, when you, when you fold this in, go all the way to the end. Because if you don't, then when you're ready to fold this up, this is just going to go bloop and it's going to be really difficult to sort out. Um, just, just go all the way to the end on all four of these ones that I've already done because there's one at each end. So all the way to the end, all the way to the end. Just do that. Um, and that way it's going to be a lot easier to work with next. Now I'm going to try and get this camera in a little closer and let's see if we can just uh, show you what comes next. Uh, that's about as close as it's going to get. Okay. Which side are we on? We're on this side. We're going to put this side. Ah, I can't get anything in the camera. There we go. I did it. I did it. I did it. This is not bad for like the second, no, first, this is the first video I've done by myself. My wife is over there trying to keep the dogs happy. Okay, you've got two choices for this corner. You can either go straight up and just fold it into a square, or you can fold over to an angle, then fold in half, then fold up. And that would be a, that would be a beveled edge. 
Now, I'm not gonna bevel these edges. I just wanna show you that it's a thing. Um, I will try to get to that. I'm kinda of mad and fun. I think I'm gonna do more of these for sure. Um, so yeah, a beveled edge just lets you get that and again, you're going to go to an angle, you're going to fold, you're going to fold this in, then you're going to fold that up. Um, I'm not going to bevel this because it's pink on pink on pink. Um, I don't think visually it's going to matter. So I am just going to go straight in and I'm just going to fold these exactly like I did before. But this time I'm going to make sure that I pin very carefully right at that corner. I'm going to do this corner, pin carefully at this corner. The, sometimes when you finish these, sometimes you'll get to the corner and then when you're done, it'll be like that a little bit. It'll be off. I don't know if the camera's showing. There we go. It'll be off like that. Don't agonize. Um, that just comes with practice. It still happens to me sometimes. Uh, you can fix it if it's really bad. Most of the time, most of the time you can just leave it because there's no, nobody's going to notice it. Trust me. What you're doing is going to look so nice that nobody's going to care. Now, a walking foot can really help with that. If that is something that if that is something that you're already working on, if you're already working on stuff like this and you're looking for tips to do it better, then I will say that there that a walking foot is just immense immense value because the reason why this pushes and, and this piece is ending up shoved forward at an angle is because a regular foot just drags along and pushes every little tiny thing forward. A walking foot goes and just steps up and over stuff, so it doesn't push um, it doesn't push little things forward on you. It's a lot easier to deal with. So this one's done. I'm going to turn this one off. I'm going to turn the camera off again while I finish the other side. But I'm going to meet you guys back at the machine, and we're going to finish this together. Okay, so we are back at the machine. I'm going to sew the last two pieces down and this will be done. This will be 100% done. So I do have a walking foot and I, that's what I've been using, by the way. I have, a, I have a walking foot for this machine. I've been lucky with that. Um, I will say anybody who has sewn in the past and is just recently getting back into it, walking, the walking foot attachments for most sewing machines are a lot cheaper now. Um, they can be really expensive. So... We're going to just do this. We're going to do this. We're going to get this done. So a, regu a regular, if you're using a regular foot that drags across, just take your time. Um, I'm not going to go super fast anyway. What you want to do is you want to sew, you want to sew right where this fold meets. You want to sew as close as you can to that, where the top of the fold meets the fabric. And also something I didn't say when I was starting earlier. Okay. Forward, 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 back stitch. Keep going. Do, do, do. Something I didn't point out because this is pink on pink. Um, if you're gonna, if if you want, if you want, if you're gonna use this technique, but you want them to be wider when you when you start. I mean, I certainly did when I was when I start when I first started using this um, quilt did you go technique. When I first started using this, my 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 top my binding at the top. I don't know if we call it binding or not anymore, but these were like um, three quarters of an inch to an inch wide as I was getting the hang of it, just so that, because I could sew it down and then I could add a second layer of sewing, I could do whatever. It was just, I had more, I, f I felt like I had more options. I felt like I was getting a more stable product, um, especially if your fabrics are, are um, especially if you're going same color to same color. Okay, so this is super simple. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm probably gonna keep talking because it's what I do. Uh, and we're done. So if you are thinking of doing one of these for yourself, anything that you want to do for your block, the inside piece is called, you know, this is just a block. This is just a glorified oversized quilting block. You can look up hundreds, thousands of designs. Take one, put that together, do this. You've got a tarot cloth. You've got a, you've got anything you want. You can just go. The bigger you, the bigger it is, the more, the more space you can do, but it's nice and quilted. You can, if you want to do one of these big enough, you can make a picnic blanket out of it. 
Um, the reason why we started doing the reason why the reason why we started getting interested in doing these is because a lot of people that read tarot, um, who is most of you, unless unless something happens and this goes viral for some reason, um, make it go viral. Do stuff anyway. That's just me and my ego talking. Never mind. Um, yeah, people were talking about wanting to be able to do tarot outside, wanting to. Um, have a tarot mat. Have a tarot. Have a have a tarot cloth that's not going to shift around. Um, an altar cloth. These are these make great altar altar cloths. Um, these have a whole lot of uses. Um, if you if you have um, you know you don't it this doesn't have to be for tarot. You can use these as an outdoor tablecloth because it's not going to blow away the, in the wind. Uh, if you scale them up or if you scale them down, you have place mats. If you put this together and just leave the bottom and the top off and make them oblong, you've got all, you know, now you've got your rectangular shapes. So you got a lot of stuff there. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are noticing this. It's really hard and this is only our second video. So we're still figuring out what is the best way to do this. Let's get way in there. Let's see it. Let's see if we can show this. So this is how a walking foot works. Now the walking foot, you get everything lined up. Getting it, getting it started is just because this is a big foot. So you don't have to start exactly at your edge. Go back a couple stitches to get back to the edge. Okay, I'll go forward. Come on, do it, do it, do it. Ah, oh, there we go, and it caught itself. And I'll tell you right now, if you're not a confident sewer, throw a couple more back stitches in. This is pink on pink with pink thread. Nobody's gonna see if you decided to throw a few extra stitches. Stitches is in. Keep that in mind too. If you're a new sewer, if you're a new sewer starting out and you're concerned that your lines aren't going to look right, that things aren't going to look right, matching your thread to your fabric um, can make a big difference. Um, it just makes it easy for those little things. Like I, I match, okay, matching thread to fabric is what people do anyway, but Sometimes people like, oh, I'll just use black thread because it's all I've got. But if you match the thread to the fabric, then you can get away with a lot more. Um, again, especially because a new sewer, like if something happens, it's like, oh, I'm not sure. I think I want to put a back stitch in here. It's less obvious. It's less obvious and it's less visible. Um, and getting a finished product that you can be proud of is the first step. I mean, I might, I might, you know, if somebody said to me, hey, can you do this but use black stitching? I would use black stitching. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm confident. I'm, 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 that's fine. But, well, okay, I wouldn't. I'm still, I'm still, um, I'm still sorting out exactly, like, the, especially the, the quilting. I'm still sorting out exactly what I want the quilting to look like. But, um, so we're going, we're going, going, going. Okay, we got a little tiny, we got a little tiny bit of a crease. It looks like a, t I can't make it come back up. We've got a tiny bit of a crease starting here. Give a little push, tuck that fabric forward. Give a little whatever, and so, then sew through. It's, it's really cool to be able to go vroom, top speed on the machine and just blast through something, but it's not always in your best interest. Okay. And again, if you do not have a... Um, if you do not have a sewing machine and you're doing this by hand, look up what's called a ladder stitch. You can actually make that, you can actually, if you're doing, if you're doing a hand stitch here, you can actually make it invisible if that's what you really want to do. So the walking stitch, because it goes up and over every, because the walking stitch, see how that comes up? Uh, yeah, you can see how that little piece comes up. Look, it's coming up right there. Because that little piece is coming up, walking forward and helping grab the thread it's um, not dragging, so this shifted. I shifted something. What did I do? There we go. I will tell you right now, guys. There is. This is the one of the best tools that you can have. Just a just a a nice little pair of tweezers. One of my it it, it my my um. Something shifted when I took, something else shifted when I took the um, clip out. So we're gonna go that. Yeah, that's gonna push forward a little bit. That's gonna push forward a little bit. I saw I saw it happening and there's nothing I can do about it. So we're, oh, it didn't push forward. Okay, it went up and over.
Don't forget when you're making when you're making these projects, when you're making these projects for yourself, you are looking at your stuff from here. You're this close. You you are not you're 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 like you're like down here doing your sewing. You're looking at every single stitch as it goes in. You're seeing every single mistake in real time as it happens. And a lot of the stuff that you're looking at going, "Oh my god, that's a mistake." is like it's actually not a mistake. Um, I thought my stuff was going to shift forward because I was seeing a little bit of a, uh, I was seeing a little bit of a fabric shift here. Basically, when I when I unfolded it, um, this here popped forward a little bit wider. I don't know. It's hard to describe. You, you, if, if you were sitting here six inches away like I am, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And look at that. It didn't happen. It didn't. It did not happen. It still closed up normally. Anyway, a walking foot will keep those edges. Will help make it easier to keep those edges squared up. And I spotted a little loose piece of thread. I'm going to pull that out. And we are done. Is it upside right? Hey, it's even upside right, guys. So that's done. So thanks for hanging out with me. I hope that this ended up being a useful tutorial slash walkthrough on um, quilting um, and quilt as you go and stuff like that. I am going to pick out a couple of loose threads. Loose threads happen, by the way. Let me just not say goodbye. I'm just I'm gonna hang off, hold off on saying goodbye for a second. When you're stitching, you're putting together a lot of when you're when you're doing when you're doing quilting from pieces like this, you're putting together a lot of pieces. So if a little piece of thread pokes through and comes up, it's not a mistake. You didn't do anything wrong. It's not the end of the world. Just get it, trim it out. Um, a lot of times if you give a slight tug as you trim it, the excess will just pop back inside the fabric. You won't see it again. So it's done. I'm going to try and get a couple good shots of this to, to finish the video. Um, and if you like the if you like what you saw, go ahead and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear back. Um, if you have if you have thoughts and ideas, I mean, I'm still learning when it comes to quilting. If you have thoughts and ideas on how I could have done it better, or thoughts and ideas on what you would like to see me explore next, then go ahead and let me know. I'd love to hear back. And in the meantime, thanks for hanging out with me, and I will see you again soon. Bye.